Well, Mercury must be in retrograde <laughs> because we're having a bit of technical difficulties, but that's live TV, so what are you going to do? Is. Kim was so good, we had to show you twice. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jennifer Lopez just announced that she's opening a chain of 15 cell phone stores in New York, L.A., and Miami. Yeah. She says she'll be in charge, and she's not just throwing her name on it, so it's no mere vanity project. That's right. So... We got to try to find out what's going on. That got us thinking about all the other female stars who are also entrepreneurs actually running their companies and how they're able to do it all. So joining us with more is Arise U.S. business editor, Andrew Schmertz. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. As if J-Lo doesn't have enough to do. Right. Now she she's is getting into woman. this cell phone business. <laughs> she's got perfume. She's like selling everything from Fiat to Bic razors and now cell phones. Well, you know, this is really interesting because she's not just selling cell phones. She's targeting the Latino community through a series of specialty brands known as Viva Mobile. And they're going to open up stores, a series of specialty stores in New York, Miami, Los Angeles, and elsewhere if it's successful. And the stores will be staffed with bilingual staff and try to make it culturally relevant, as she says, to the community. What's really interesting here is she sees a clear opportunity, and we've done these stories before, where the Latino market does not be believe that they're being properly served by big brands. And JLo is obviously very involved in this community and believes that there's an opportunity here. It's the same product. It's going to be the same phones, the same say, plans. No such thing as a Latino cell phone. That's correct. Um, and, so she's just and, making it more convenient for her community to go out and get these. Make them feel more welcoming. Okay. And I think that's the way Latino community feels these days is that marketers have not really done enough to reach them. This is the fastest growing community with buying power that's right now. True. So you do not want to forget them. And a lot of people say what's going on here is that there's just not enough chief marketing officers with Latino backgrounds mm -hmm. in the big companies so it's easy to oversee it. Gotcha. And the stores will start rolling out in New York first on in June 15th. Right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Good. Do we know where it'll be located in New well, York? Um, we, we don't. Okay. We can, we can, we can find out. I bet, I, bet you, I, know, I bet you I know where it's going to be. In the, the Bronx. Bronx. Yeah, yeah. In the Bronx. That's my, where it's from. My, my hometown. All right. Are you from the Bronx, too? I'm from the Bronx. You're from the Bronx? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm I live from in the Bronx. You're from the Bronx. Does that count? No, you and J-Lo. Did you and J-Lo take the six together? I'm sure. To Yankee Stadium. <laughs> so, Angie, you got to tell us, it seems like J-Lo's doing it. There's a bunch of other celebrities that are trying to, you know, make it known that they're the head of their companies, the CEOs. Are, what is this trend? Do they find it necessary to be the CEO, to be successful? I think so. It's, it's an interesting transformation. So it used to be that celebrities were just celebrities, and right. they would license their names. They would turn them over to managers. But they weren't really all that involved. Right. This sort of started, you know, with Madonna and with Oprah. Quite a few years ago, a new breed of celebrities said they're not just actors, mm -hmm. or they're just not talk show hosts or pop stars, that they're smart enough to be business people. And so they have taken over and not just licensing their brands, but controlling their brands and the, using their business savvy. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, Oprah has always said that she signs any check that's over $100,000. She doesn't it's, it's, let anyone touch her money. And by the way, she made, a, I mean, she made a life-changing decision when the Chicago TV station came to her and said, let's do a talk show. She said, I want to own part of it. Yeah. That is the turning point. Mm. Own seems like a trend oh. in her, her yeah. life. Oh. <laughs> 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 so take us through some other famous people that are now running their own businesses and running them for real. Well, let's start with uh, the Kardashians. Uh -huh. So the Kardashians have made a business of uh, being celebrities. They sure because have. Because what do they do? <laughs> Nothing. So let's start with, you know, let's TV. Well, well, what they do is, is something we can't talk about on the family show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, they make a lot of money doing whatever that is. Let's no, they start. have clothing lines and they all do. that yeah, now. They, they do. And, and they make something like, they've made $65 million since they went wow. into the business of doing nothing. Are you kidding? Uh, and let's remember how they started. So their mom was Kris Jenner, yeah. married to Robert Kardashian, who yeah. is part of O.J. Simpson's legal team. That's right. Uh, she divorced yeah. him and is now married to Bruce Jenner the very famous right. former Olympian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the family has gone on to listen to some of the things they endorse. They endorse clothing lines, skincare products, nutrition supplements, books, fragrances. They have, of course, a reality TV show. Basically, I think if you pay them, they'll put their name on it. And they've extended that 15 minute of fame now to about 12 years. <laughs> <Wow>. So uh, <laughs> they've done 12 um, long, they've 12 long years. handful years <laughs> oh. uh, for the reality television sector. So but, they've know, obviously done like to, you know, People like to make fun of them, but they're real serious well, business women. Yeah, that's a very good point. You make yeah. fun of them, but they know what they're doing. And they're laughing all the way to the that, bank. That, that's mm -hmm. right. And I've actually heard Kim in several interviews about entrepreneurship, and she is very smart, actually. You know, they have to, you know, you can make fun of them. Mm -hmm. They play a role. 
-hmm. and they're obviously successful at it. Well, another sister team that's been really successful are the Olsen twins. Mm. This is just a full house. Incredible story. So in the full house, you know, there was only <laughs> one character and uh -huh. two of them played the same exactly. character. And by the way, they're fraternal twins, not identical twins. I didn't know that until we started oh, looking know, into this story. So basically, oh, um, they were, again, very smart. They started going out and exploiting their brand. And originally, mm -hmm. the two managers were managing their company. And when they were just 18 years old, they bought the company. Really? And so the two of them own, along with their father, the rest of the company, and they have made, they are worth $300 million. Wow. You are kidding me. That now is that 150 said. each? Or? I, I, I haven't asked them <laughs> <laughs> to please show me the bank statements. Right. <laughs> but whether it's 150 or 150 each. Million. Well, they really capitalized on the clothing industry. I remember when they first came off the show, they really that's, made a lot of money out of that. That's right. They started with the clothing industry, mm -hmm. and then they appealed to a certain sect out yeah. there and they've done very well. But they we haven't heard from them in a while, but well, you know, we oh, have no, 300 million actually, dollars. They're huge stars in the world of fashion now. Mm -hmm. Now they do a high-end line called The Row, mm -hmm. and it's doing, it's doing really well for them. But they made a bulk of their money selling kids' clothes to That's like right. places they like Walmart and started stuff like with that. kids' clothes, mm -hmm. but they've obviously evolved and matured. Yeah, right. they sure have. It's very nice women. And they've had some difficult times, by the way, mm -hmm. in, in, as teenagers, and they've seemed to have gone past that. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a rough transition, but you're right. right. They have gone past $300 million. That. Dollars right. That. <laughs> right. Right. Over. That, that'll make it up for it all. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little acne as a right. teenager. You'll be all right. <laughs> well, there's another youngster that's you know been in the news a lot lately for getting it right. Taylor Swift, she's only 23 and already a phenomenal businesswoman. Yeah. She's not just a pop star. She is the CEO of Taylor Swift Inc. Mm -hmm. And she has been very active in making sure that she runs every aspect of her brand, mm -hmm. not just from the concert promotions and not just from writing her own music, but from whatever she's involved in, she personally signs off on it. So she may be 23, but she appears very savvy. We've seen a bunch of interviews with her where she's very clear in how she progresses. And you know, she's always been this way. I mean, the story about her is she didn't party when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. She sat at home writing songs. She turned down, you know, a signing um, record label with Universal Music. I didn't know that. Uh, Universal Music was going to sign her. She went to an indie label instead to have more control. Mm. A pretty wow. big gamble for somebody at, right. who at the time was maybe 18 years old or 18, 19 mm -hmm. years old. And that obviously worked out and for her. And she convinced her family to pick up and move to Nashville. That girl, That's right. yeah. She's, she's got some strength. She sure has. has like Janet out. Jackson says, she's in control. She's in control. <laughs> <laughs> so what about other entrepreneurs? What can they learn from a lot of these celebrities who are out here doing it right and doing their own thing and balancing this, the uh, all the celebrity issues they got going on, the music, the tours, and an actual business? What other can I You know, I think all of them have one thing in common. Mm -hmm. They are taking their brand. They have a head start with their brand and they're turning their brand into a business. And when they mm. do that, they seem to be successful. But you know, when celebrities kind of go outside of their comfort zone, mm -hmm. things kind of kind of go wrong. I'll give you some examples. Kim Basinger bought a town in Georgia for $20 million mm -hmm. because she thought that this would be a good tourist location. A whole she town? Build a whole town. Really? In Georgia. <laughs> I don't know where it was in Georgia, but apparently no one else does, does because no one went. Right. She was going to build studios uh -huh. and amusement uh, parks, and she ended up going, bankrupt and selling it for a million dollars. Why would she know anything about owning a town? Maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. It was like Graviton, so, Georgia or something, that's right? right? Yeah. yeah, that, that, sound, that yeah. sounds right. Um, I mean, Jay-Z is a very successful huh. businessman, but of course he has gone into the restaurant nightclub business and hasn't done as well. Uh, so the, the key, I think, for them is to work on your brand mm -hmm. and work on that. And then and then branch out. Yeah, sometimes you just have to stay in your lane, master that before you start to Bef tackle other industries. Before you go out and uh, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, New York met Lenny Dykstra. Uh, you know, went into the stock picking business and now he's in jail. So he was doing fine uh, selling baseball cards. <laughs> Maybe he should have stuck with that. Right, right. <laughs> you may have seen his late night infomercials. He was pretty funny. Do you think that um, particularly female C entertainment CEOs feel more emboldened in recent years by the successes of people like a Jennifer Lopez and a Madonna? No question about it. Mm -hmm. I think now when managers maybe go to them and say, you know, I'll, I'll be really the, the brains behind the mm -hmm. operation. You just go out there and go on the runway. I'll manage this. They can push back and say, no, I'm smart enough to do this mm -hmm. myself. And it's not just that. You know, yesterday we talked about the 100 most powerful women mm -hmm. on the Forbes list. Look at that list. A lot of these uh, women had nothing. Yeah. They, they are self-made women. And, and I think that message is starting to get out there. And they feel more empowered. Yeah. Because you would always think when you talk to a celebrity, because they come across as in control, many of them probably only feel, like you said, in their comfort zone, okay, and this may 
maybe lets them go outside that a little Gosh. bit. Well, I think it's also we've heard so many horrible stories of them being taken advantage of, and right. they end up with nothing because someone has stolen their money or made a bad business move that they signed off on. That's right. Especially some, especially when you're in a group, especially the boy bands, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. If you go back to Motown early days, mm -hmm. we've heard all of those stories, and I think now everybody's a little bit smarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, managing their own finances and businesses it's a little so bit more true. particular. I think people have a better understanding of how the sausage is made. That's right. I mean, historically, you could get someone with royalties for a Cadillac. Sure. That's mm -hmm. not happening anymore. That's people right. are holding on to their music, control of their music, et cetera, et cetera. So. I know it's a good Be thing. Beyonce has been very outspoken about having control over her brand, over her businesses, and everything that she's involved in. Also, yeah, so. she fired her own father. Right, so she's definitely <laughs> she's That's in control. A tough <laughs> Dad, look, who runs it's the not world? Out, Dad. It's not. It's not you, Dad. It's me. <laughs> That's a tough conversation to have. So you know, and you, you know what? You know, and you go back and you look at child actors who had their parents manage money and then lose it all. So I think a lot of them see that now. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, sticking up for themselves. Oh. Well, good advice. So we'll all have to get together and, you know, form a business. Exactly. Sounds good to me. Jets, maybe? Yeah, we go Jets. Okay. That's a fun. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> always good to see you. Thank good you so you. much. Thank I'm you. feeling empowered right now. There you go. <laughs> and you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.